I turn to uh, Kyung Wook Woo, former ambassador uh, at the OECD and uh, presently uh, president of the Korean Bretton Woods Club and chairman of the board of the Korea Center for International Finance. You have the floor. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much, Chairman. I'd like to make two comments on the one about the general uh, uh, monetary policy of the advanced countries, where they can achieve 2% inflation target. And second is more about the Korean experience of dealing with uh, this crisis this time. The first one about the uh, global uh, monetary policy, I think there's a, a real danger that we'll end up with overstretch, no, over tightening rather than under tightening. There are a couple of reasons for that. Number one is that it looks like that all the advanced countries' central bank is doing their own tightening, but there's no coordination among themselves so that each country, when they do the tightening, they will also kill the overseas demand of other countries that all together, putting all together, they might come up with over tightening. The second point is a little bit uh, related with the Professor uh, Feldman mentioned about this coordination between monetary and fiscal policy. Normally, it would be ideal to tame down the inflation, the monetary and fiscal policy should tighten together. But in this time, you know, because of the various rapid increase of the interest rate. There are vulnerable groups in the society that face the danger, and that probably requires more support from the fiscal side. Plus, we talk about this you know, Inflation Reduction Act of the USA, and the same is being mentioned in the Europe, Japan, even in Korea, because you know all this chip industry or EV industry, that requires uh, fiscal support. Another thing is this climate change adaptation cost. We all know that after COP27, you know, we are behind the curve to meet this target, so that there will be huge demand for the fiscal support. So on one side, when the monetary is doing the tightening, the fiscal side, even at the best of the intentions of the government, there are many areas that still require the fiscal spending. So if the tightening should be done by monetary side alone, then you can end up with over tightening rather than uh, under tightening. And the third point about the behavioral side, we all know the Fed is behind the curve at the beginning. They were saying, you know, this is a transitory. So about six months behind the curve. And behaviorally, then you tend to overcompensate. And we have all this famous delay of the monetary policy that actually have effect. And one final point that's related to the Korean side as well is the, through the foreign exchange channel that also uh, requires over tightening. So when you look at all those things concerned, we might be able to achieve the inflation target, but we we'll most likely have a recession uh, than originally planned by the most recent OEC, uh, IMF estimation. About the Korean experience, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that we have a roller coaster during this year about the foreign exchange market. From April to October, about six or seven months, our foreign exchange, the Korean won depreciated 18% against the dollar. And we have done almost everything recommended during the Asian financial crisis, during the global financial crisis. We have built up huge uh, foreign exchange reserve over $430 billion. We have net foreign assets also around $400 billion. And our uh, short-term debt against our reserve is around 40%. We have some capital management, macroprudential measures. So all those things are in place. But when your exchange rate depreciates 18% for just a, in short period, like six or seven months, still, you cannot absorb all those shocks. And the market is very much worried. The, suddenly, the business has to deal with huge uncertainty, high interest rate, high dollar, super dollar, and then high inflation. And there's no way to know that we're going to end. 
And finally, because of all this uh, change and expectation in the market, in November, starting from November, uh, dollar actually depreciated. In other words, Korean won appreciated around 7 or 8 percent. That actually calmed down the market. But during the time until November, if you look at the figure and how much a burden it placed on the monetary policy side, in the first half of this uh, year, we have this energy price hike, food price hike, and then we have this depreciation. So that in our purchase price inflation, about 80% comes from overseas. And it's very much difficult for the monetary side to set up its policy based on its domestic situation. We have a liquidity squeeze coming in the market. We have many companies facing difficulties. But because of this inflation pressure coming from not only uh, commodity price increase, but also exa no, exaggerated by this uh, exchange rate. On October monetary policy, we had a forward guidance that we're going to perhaps come up with a small step, like 25 basis points. But we ended up with 50 basis points. And that's exactly the point that through this free exchange channel, some of the monetary uh, authorities will end up with uh, more tightening than desired or warranted by the local situation. And another point uh, in that regard is that our central bank governor famously mentioned that, you know, our central bank is independent of the government, but not independent of the Federal Reserve. And no more times we can, you know, follow with the Federal Reserve with all this capital flow, but as I said, for six months, 18 percent, nobody can handle it. And there is a big pressure from the business and the political side to come up with a, a swap arrangement with the Fed. And it's true that we had a swap arrangement in, uh, during the Asian financial crisis. And no, during the global financial crisis, there are nine countries with a non-convertible currency that was given this lifeline to show up the confidence, not so much for the money, but so much, it's more for the confidence. And also during the pandemic times from 2020 to 2021, Unilaterally, this was given by the Federal Reserve. But now probably it's not a good time, even though we ask for the uh, Fed swap. I don't think they're going to uh, accept it. But when you have seen such a big roller coaster movement on the foreign exchange market, I still think that there must be some more structured way for non comfortable current countries to have reasonable expectation of having access to the Fed, which is still missing. You know, the last one is given by unilaterally during the pandemic times. So that may be something that international financial architecture is missing up to now. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Only to be sure that uh, I understood fully that what you have said. Uh, there was a period of, if I understand well, depreciation of the US dollar by 18% and appreciation of the US dollar? Okay. And then you said roller coaster. So then at a certain moment you had the reverse. Of 8%. Of 8%. Just in one month at a time. Yeah. And so first depreciation, which we understand pretty well because uh, you did not augment interest rates and the US Fed augmented Massively interest rate. Exactly. With a, a lag, but okay, so that's not terribly surprising, obviously, uh, uh, if, I, if I understand well the constellation of interest rates uh, between the US and Korea. And, and then in a recent period, there has been some kind of catching up. Okay. So you wanted, you wanted the swap to correct the fact that there was an interest rate differential which was substantial? Is that, is that the message? No, actually, uh, in terms of the you know, REER, as you just mentioned, when the Fed tightened very rapidly, and Korean interest rate also began to follow up. But despite that, because the tightening was so rapid, so within just six months or seven months' time, Korean won depreciated 
even at the best of you know, Korean authorities' persuasion to the market that fundamental is okay, RDI is okay, this is not the Korean one problem, but rather caused by the Fed's uh, tightening speed. But that does not calm down the market because if you are in the business and then you suddenly see your interest rate is going up, inflation is going up, and then we are the country very much dependent on import of energy and import of the food. I, I, got, I, got, the, I yeah. got the point. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's, that's clear enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed.